welcome back to Innovation. Today we are going to talk about a really, really awesome topic and a tasty one too. Molecular gastronomy. Molecular gastronomy? What, what is that? Oh, I am. It's molecular gastronomy. It's the study of food science that seeks to investigate the physical and chemical transformations of ingredients that occur in cooking. It has three special areas that we look at, a social, an artistic, and a technical piece. That's right, Sarah. So what I did is I went ahead and tried out some of these techniques that I learned, and I made what I think is one of the best, craziest, most interesting, artistic desserts I have ever made. Well, that sounds awesome. I want to learn how to do that. Can you show us, Mr. McLaughlin? Oh, me too. That sounds exciting and delicious. Well, there are three different things that I made in this one dessert recipe. And I, I also went ahead and made two other experiences that I think you could replicate at home. The first dessert, I think, might be a little hard because you need some special ingredients that don't really show up in most kitchens. Oh, yeah? Like what? I got some pretty cool things in my kitchen, like salt and pepper, sugar, you know, other stuff, too. Well, the first strange ingredient is called agar agar. It's a jelly-like substance obtained from red algae. It's actually a mixture of two components. Uh, one's a linear polystyrene agarose, and uh, the other one is a heterogeneous mix of smaller molecules called aeropectin. Yeah, that wasn't all that helpful. Could you give me something a little less technical, Mr. McLaughlin? So sure, many of you have probably had Jello before, and inside Jello we use something called gelatin. Most gelatin comes from animal products. This is just like gelatin, only it doesn't come from animal products. It comes from plant products, which means it is vegan and can help people who can't typically have those kinds of desserts enjoy those kinds of desserts. We can use it to make jellies, puddings, custards, and we can also use it to make some very interesting things, which I found out. The second interesting ingredient that I used is something called soy lecithin. It's actually another food additive made from several different sources, one of them, of course, being soy. It is used as an emulsifier or sometimes called a lubricant. And when it's added to food, it can also become an antioxidant and a flavor protector. Now, it does have some controversy surrounding it. So you probably want to look into it a little bit before you decide to use it in your own diet. It is something that already exists in a lot of foods like ice cream, infant formulas, breads, margarines, other kinds of convenience foods. So in other words, you probably have already had it and may not have realized it. So good news is it's usually in such small amounts that you don't have to worry about it. And we're going to use a very small amount when we make our really special cool dessert today. Sounds great. Yep, let's get started. So for this first part, I needed a scale and I needed a pan and I took a dish and I put the dish on the scale and I zeroed it out and then I added in my first degree in it was which is the agar agar. Now, it's tricky to get it to measure with this scale because I needed exactly five grams. So I had to play with it a little bit until I could get five grams of agar agar in the dish. Then into my pan, I added four ounces or half of cup of apple juice, which is something that a lot of people have, especially this time of year. Then I added in water. Now I only needed a third of a cup of water. So um, that was pretty easy to do. Then I turn and dump in the agar agar. 
and set everything to start to boil. Wow, your stove looks like it really, really boils stuff fast. I am, do you remember the video trick Mr. McLaughlin showed us last week in order to speed up video? That's what he did here. Sarah, that's right. I'll probably be using that technique a couple times in this lesson. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this big syringe and I'm gonna pull the liquid that I had boiled after it cooled a little bit into the syringe. Then I take this plastic tubing and I put it on the end. It's a little tricky to get on, especially with things being hot. Now I am going to squeeze some of the liquid into the tube and fill the tube all the way up to the edge. And you can watch it go through. Here it goes. And almost all the way up. I wanted to be careful so I didn't make a mess because it moved really quickly because it was hot. And there we go. Tube filled up. Next step is you take the tube off the syringe and you can put the extra stuff back into the pot because we're going to be using that. And you take the tube and you put it into an ice water bath. And then you let it sit for like three minutes. So I sped this process up a little bit and cut the film. So when you're done, you come back and you take something like a plate. I found out later that wasn't such a good choice. A cup works better. And then you take the tube out of the liquid and the agar agar has jellified the apple juice. And now we're ready to push it out of the tube. And the way we do that is with the same syringe. Only this time it is full with air and we push the tube on the end of the syringe and I found I have to hold the tube and hold it onto the syringe and press the bottom of the syringe really really hard and then the noodle starts to come out it's pretty difficult to do but once you do it does kind of shoot out of the tube and then you're ready to do it again and again and again, and again. It, it takes a lot of time to go ahead and make an entire plate of noodles. So we're gonna use that time-lapse technique and you can watch me very quickly go through and make another whole batch of noodles. And there we go. We have our agar, agar apple noodles. Next, I was going to make some caviar. Now, again, we're gonna use agar, agar, and I'm going to use some honey. And the agar, agar I needed was two grams, so I went to the scale again. And the water I needed was a third cup of water and a half a cup of honey. But what I did is I heated the water up in the microwave a little bit before I poured it into the honey. So that way I could really mix it together because honey's kind of hard to mix when it's cold. So you really want to heat it up. And I didn't want to put it right in the pan because eh, I didn't want to burn the honey. So once I mixed it up a little bit, then I poured it into the pan. And next step is we boil again. The agar agar needs to be boiled in order to be activated. Now, in order to make the caviar, after we have boiled the honey mixture, we have to have in the refrigerator some vegetable oil. The vegetable oil has to be very, very cold. Now, the first time I did this, I tried the freezer and yeah, it made it turn white, but I was able to fix that by sticking it in the microwave for, for a minute or two, and that fixed it and then get it cold again. And we want it just so it still is that kind of clear yellowish liquidy, but just really, really cold. So you have to watch that. Once you have boiled our liquid, we are again 
There we go. Time-lapse photography. Really fun. Let it cool off a little bit because it's super, super hot. We are now going to take our syringe and we are going to start to drip little drops into our oil. And when we do that, the agar agar in the honey water cools off and immediately turns into these really cool little pearls that we're calling caviar. Now you have to be careful that you really, really want to make little drips. So you have to be patient and take your time and go slow. But when you're done, you now have this jar of oil and honey caviar. In order to get rid of the oil, you use a strainer and pour the whole container into a measuring cup or something and you have the oil, which you can use in a later project. A lot of people save it. You get all of the little honey globules out of the jar. And then you take it over to the sink and rinse it because you want to rinse all of the oil off of the honey caviar. It's not that hard to do. It rinses off pretty quickly. So once you do that, now you can see how shiny it is. And we put it onto the plate. And we now have our honey caviar. I thought it looked pretty cool. Here is a close up for you. You can see a little closer on the spoon. So this is what it looks like really close up. It really looks like caviar, but it's made out of honey. So the last step is to make what's called a lemon foam. And to make the lemon foam, we're gonna use that soy product again, and we're gonna have one third cup of water and one third cup of lemon. This is pretty easy. You put all the ingredients together in a cup and then you get a blender or a hand mixer and you just start blending it until it becomes foamy. And once it's foamy, that's the foam that we're gonna put on top of our dessert. So it's really not that complicated to make this part. So I blend it all up. Get some nice foam there. And we are ready to start to build our dessert. Now, I thought it would be great if I start it with some strawberries because strawberries go well with apple and other kinds of fruits. So I went to the freezer and I got some strawberries. I had some frozen ones. And then I went and I got my noodles and I put my noodles next onto the plate with my caviar, put my caviar on first and then my noodles. Doesn't that look good? So we have this flavor of strawberry and honey and apple and a little bit of lemon flavor right on top. I'm gonna sort this out a little bit, get it a little bit neater, try to make it presentable. Once I get it the way I want to, I'm going to just get a spoon and lightly scoop some of the foam off the top of the jar and put it on top of my dessert. And there we have it. A strawberry apple noodle honey caviar with a lemon foam. My kids tried it, I tried it, it was absolutely delicious. Next, I thought I would show you all how to do some molecular gastronomy yourself. This is something that only needs a few ingredients that even I am probably has in his kitchen. You need apple juice, apples, cinnamon, and honey. We saw in the last examples, jellification with the apple noodles, spherification with the honey caviar, and emulsification with the lemon foam. We are now going to use dehydration to create fruit roll-ups. So the first thing I'm going to do is take all of the apples, which there's about 10 of them, and I'm gonna peel them with my peeler, 
and then I'm going to core them with my apple core. I'm going to take them and chop them all up. Now, when I measured it out, it turned out to be about eight cups. Next thing I'm going to do is get some apple juice and pour in about one cup of apple juice. Now, this is really all you need, but I like mine to have a little bit of sweetness. So I took some honey and poured in just, you know, whatever I thought was a good amount of honey. There you go. Next is I added some cinnamon. Now you can decide not to add the cinnamon, but I like the cinnamon. And if you want to add some sugar, you can add some sugar. But I think the honey gives it enough sugar. Next, I take a spoon and I start to mix it around a little bit just to get everything combined together. Next step is to take all of this goodness and put it into a pot on the stove. Get every last bit. Stir it a little bit more. Make sure you have your parents help with this part. Also the knife part too. Put the lid on and turn it to about medium. You don't want to burn it. And we're going to let it boil for a little bit. Again, I'm using my time-lapse photography to show you how it boils up. That's pretty cool looking. All boiled up. Next, I mash it. And I'm going to let it cool for a little bit because the next step is to put it in the blender. And I don't want to put something hot into the blender. Then I'm going to pour it onto this pad and smooth it out. Give it a couple taps to flatten it. Do the next one, smooth it out. A couple taps to flatten it. Put it in the oven for about 170 degrees. Now this is going to take a long time, hours. Next is I'm gonna roll it up onto wax paper and take my knife again, again with your parents' help, cut it up and I have my fruit roll-ups. Do the next one, roll it up Cut it up and you have your fruit roll ups. Now you also can use some applesauce with the leftovers or make another batch. It's up to you. I hope you really like that. The fruit roll ups were really, really good. One last thing we're going to do is now how to explode an emulsion. We're going to start with cream and separate the emulsion into butter and buttermilk. The video clip is Take a, a mixer blurry, and we're going to put in about eight ounces of the heavy cream into the stand mixer. Now, there's not a big number about measuring it. You could fill as much as fill into your mixer, but if you put too much in, it makes a mess. So we're gonna put in eight ounces. Okay. Start. So we're gonna pour it in. So there's eight ounces. I think I could do more than eight ounces. So we're going to do 16. So there's 16 ounces. Now the rest is pretty simple. We pour it into the mixer. Now we have poured the heavy cream into the mixer. Close the mixer. And we're going to turn it on. We're going to start with a one. And we're just going to let it go for a little bit. And then okay. over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit by little bit by little bit until we have butter inside the container. And then once you have the butter, you take the butter out and the rest left behind is called buttermilk. And we'll make that um, buttermilk into something else, another recipe later. But we'll take the butter and then we can add some salt into it and put it in a container and we have our butter. You'll know it's done when you see the butter and the, the liquid separate. How hard is it? It's like a yeah. really thick whipped cream. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, wow. And that from, was from that liquid. Now I got, I'm going to take 
the liquid, I'm going to pour the liquid off. This is called buttermilk. You ever hear buttermilk? This is what buttermilk is. So I'm going to take... and pour the buttermilk into this strainer. So about half of whatever you started with will be buttermilk, and then the other half will be, will be butter. Let's see if my math is right. See how much more I got out of it. So I'm about four ounces, and I started with 16. So I got about four more ounces of milk to get out of this. So I'm gonna squeeze it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you the inside so you can see the butter now. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Let's do it this way. Can you see the butter? Oh. Looks like butter now. I'm going to keep getting the buttermilk out of it. So at this point, it's unsalted butter. If you wanted to, you could add salt to it, or you could add herbs to it. Or if you wanted to make it sweeter, you could add a little, little bit of sugar to it. But I'm going to take this out now and put it on my bowl. Look, here we go. Butter. Okay, I think, so I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in it. I like some salt in my butter. I'm gonna put a too, too much salt in it. I'm gonna put like a couple pinches of salt. Mix it up a little bit. Buttermilk still squeezing out of it a little bit. You guys want to see the butter? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? I think we should make some toast. It looks a little warm. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. I just put cheese like that. So, yeah, so this, this is, like is so this is the butter. Oops. Yeah, back up. Black in the camera. Okay, I'll let the boys sleep too. And pour out the rest of the buttermilk. Wait, ew. No, no, buttermilk's good. That's how you make pancakes. Buttermilk pancakes. No, this is, it looks so good. It's just milk. That's all. Just, it's just the milk is separated from the fat. That's the butter. So now, I got